in this week's In My Mug, we're off to somewhere that we don't visit very often. We're off to try Honduras Cerro Azul. Hello and welcome. It's fantastic to have you here again. And as I said at the very beginning, we're actually off to somewhere where we don't go to very often. We're off to Honduras to try um, a coffee called Cerro Azul. Now, why don't we buy a lot of Honduras coffee? Well, Honduran coffee is absolutely delicious. It has a fantastic profile and it's a profile that I love. The biggest problem that we have is that uh, Honduras coffee tends to not hold very well. So it ages very quickly. Well, why does it age very quickly, Steve? Well, a lot of that is to do with the processing uh, of the coffee in Honduras. The way that they process it, the way that they ship it, the time that it has at the port, the humidity, all of these things factor into how the green bean arrives in the UK. So why are we buying this Honduras if they fade so quickly, I hear you say? Well, our, the producers of this coffee uh, actually are Nicaraguan. So Nicaragua and Honduras share a land border um, and our good friend the Moreshes bought Cerro Azul, oh, it'd be around about seven or eight years ago now, um, because uh, Irwin was spending more time in Honduras um, as his partner lived there. He decided he wanted to have a farm there and they diversified and bought bought Cerro Azul. So why does that make the coffee better, Steve, I hear you say? Well, because they've taken their Nicaraguan processes and the things that they do in Nicaragua to Honduras, it's meant that this coffee actually lasts the whole year and doesn't fade and doesn't get that kind of woody, papery, nasty taste um, that you get from coffees that kind of have aged prematurely. Um, so taking all of the things that they've learned in Nicaragua and introducing it to Honduras, doing things in a slightly different way than people would do in Honduras, to the point of they've taken their own team to Honduras um, to, to help pick the coffee. Now let's get into a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna hand you over to Virtual Steve, who is gonna go through all of the things of this week's coffee. Thanks, Steve. So as Steve says, this comes from the Maresh family, and the Maresh family have five generations of coffee growing experience, but all in Nicaragua. Um, this is the first project that they've ever done into Honduras, and it really is a complete family affair, with Erwin initially buying the farm, with Eliane then managing the farm, and uh, Miss Dr. Maresh, the uh, head of the family, regularly visiting and being part of it. But also the whole team, as Steve said, actually comes from Nicaragua that manage the farm, so they can take the great uh, skills and experiences they have of growing coffee and introduce it into Honduras growing. Now, this farm has been recognised internationally by Cup of Excellence. It actually won a couple of years ago in the Cup of Excellence competition. Um, and a lot of this comes from the experience of Erwin and Eliane, um, who both have been head judges in the Cup of Excellence uh, in the past. So they know what kind of coffees really make the grade in this competition. And they were able to cup, because they're some of the best cuppers I've ever cupped with, um, find quality on the table and find what would do really well in Cup of Excellence. So they started this project in 2011 and uh, it's in the uh, uh, region of the National Park Azul Membar, which is in the Sigapeque uh, Comayagua uh, in Honduras. Uh, excuse my pronunciation to anybody from Honduras, I've just managed to kill that. Um, and um, is by the lake El Cito, uh, very near to Santa Barbara. The farm lies on the other side of the lake of Lake Yogo and is blessed with an amazing microclimate and conditions that are just unique to this farm. It has rolling fog in the mornings, um, it has very cool temperatures that take quite a while to build up. Um, actually very similar to the conditions that they're used to in Nicaragua, which is I guess why they were super excited and drawn to this farm. Um, the soil is just so rich in organic matter. Um, the farm was actually abandoned before and um, they've really had to work hard to pull it back. But the bonus of that parts of the farm abandoned is that the soil is full of nutrition uh, and full of goodness for the, uh, for the coffee plants growing. So let's look at it. It's in Honduras. It's in the department of Camayugia uh, in the municipality of Sigapeque. Um, uh, the farm is called Finca Zero Azul. Um, the farm manager is Francesco Escobar and Linda Zeldon. Um, it is owned by the Maresh family. It's 135 hectares in size. They never do anything small. 
It has an elevation of 1,450, right up to 1,900 meters above sea level. Um, the varietal is Katayi. Um, it's uh, a washed process and it is an amazing coffee. So why don't we zoom to Steve to do the tasting and see what he thinks of it. Thank you, Virtual Steve. Um, as you may tell, I'm back in Sweden now uh, for a few weeks until I go back to the UK, uh, but it was so cool to spend some time um, in the roastery and with the team and uh, really just to let you all know they're doing super well, they're doing great there. Um, fantastic kind of cope through all of these very difficult times as everybody else has but uh, been doing an awesome job in getting coffee out to you so let's get into the coffee so Honduras coffee for me is always very sweet like particularly the washed um, and this is no different it has a great sweetness very creamy very silky kind of big mouth feel so I want you to think like milk chocolate kind of like but melted milk chocolate it's really got that gloopiness in the feel there's a tiny bit of acidity a little shoulder but it's kind of like a white grape for a very gentle acidity um, and a little bit of like um, like a pear like acidity so that kind of like crunch and bite you know like delicate but very powerful um, and I think that kind of sums this coffee up best I really love this coffee. I love that Honduras has uh, a place in the has been lineup, and I hope that you're enjoying it too. Listen, thank you very much for joining me. It is uh, amazing that you get this far through it, um, and um, hopefully we're going to get some more interesting ones where I'm out and about. This is where I'm. I'm not isolating because in Sweden you don't have to isolate when you come, but I'm keeping my distance and just being aware that I really shouldn't be mixing with uh, with people after a long flight. So uh, just making sure they're fit and healthy. Listen, thank you for joining and do remember life is too short for bad coffee.